Hi friends, in this session we will discuss about prerequisite readings which are applicable for CFA level 1's 2024 curriculum. Now this prerequisite part is not new to CFA curriculum, we had this in even 2023. So three readings were there for economics and two readings for financial statement analysis. The situation is very different in 2024 compared to 2023 because in 2023 we had limited prerequisites. Now in 2024 we have a number of chapters in prerequisite. So here we have to take the decision to prepare prerequisite because if you decide to prepare all the prerequisites, it will consume a lot of time. And if you don't have enough time for your preparation, then you will suffer a lot in your actual preparation. For those who don't know, prerequisite readings are recommended reading by CFA Institute. These readings won't get tested in the examination, but Institute expects you to know the concepts which are covered in the prerequisite reading because the concepts which are covered in the actual curriculum depends on, or the uh, topics which are covered in the actual curriculum depends on these prerequisite readings. So here in 2024, we have multiple readings for bonds, FSA and economics. So for three subjects. And this creates very unique situation or problematic situation, right? As we discussed to prepare or not, because it will take toll on your time, right? So here we will discuss subject by subject. So first we'll start with the economics. In economics, we have in prerequisite, we have topics in demand and supply, including like it includes the advanced as well as the basic discussion, the products and cost curve of firm and aggregate output prices and economic growth. So these three readings, these three areas, so there are multiple readings. I just uh, form like uh, provided three bullet points here. So these three areas will impact only first two chapters of your economics and rest of the area, rest of the uh, chapters in your actual curriculum, you can prepare without preparing this pre prerequisite readings. Now you have to take this decision to prepare first two chapters. Should you prepare all the prerequisite or you can slightly compromise first two readings of economics, the actual economic, uh, actual curriculum and move on with the rest of the preparation. So this is the call you have to take considering whatever time you have in your hand. Now, again, if you are coming from the economics background, hardcore economics background, you won't face any problem in uh, the actual curriculum. If you directly start with the um, curriculum topics, you will be comfortable. You don't need to prepare prerequisite. But if you are not very economics friendly, then you have to or you must prepare these readings. As I said, you have to decide this. If you ask me, if you have enough time, you must prepare these readings. If you don't have enough time, um, just revise these readings. Just understand the basics of it and move into the actual discussion. Try to invest as less time as possible in these readings, irrespective of you have a lot of time or you have limited time. Okay. So this is about the economics because in economics, remember in economics, only first two chapters are suffering because of prerequisite rest of the portion is sorted for you. Now in quants, yeah, just one more information. Very soon I will provide a video course on these prerequisites, which will cover only those areas of this prerequisite readings, which impacts your actual preparation. Meaning if you directly start your actual preparation, the support you need from prerequisite, I will cover those topics by deleting all the remaining topics, which are not important for your preparation. So just wait for it. I'll need some time. Uh, you can expect it will be ready by Jan, not before that for sure. The, then we have next subject quants. In quants, we have time value of money, organizing data and visual, uh, organizing, visualizing data and describing data, probability concepts, uh, common probability distribution, sampling estimation, hypothesis testing, I guess. Hypothesis testing, uh, the major portion and introduction to linear regression. So these are in the prerequisite. Again, some portion is in, in few cases, some portion is in the prerequisite and some portion is covered in the actual syllabus. So here in quants, the thing is same. If you are coming from hardcore quants background, you can directly start your preparation because all these are basic concepts. Okay. Even uh, if I consider the FRM students, so if you are coming from the FRM background or quants background, you can directly start your uh, CF level preparation. You don't need to prepare these prerequisite readings. But if you are not coming from the hardcore quants background, then my recommendation is to compulsorily prepare one, two, and three. These three readings. Almost everyone understands what is time value of money. So, and the time value of money part is also covered in current curriculum also. So first two chapters are directly or indirectly on time value of money only. So you just need to understand what is the compounding, continuous compounding, quarterly compounding, seminal compounding. So that much part is not covered. Rest of the part is already covered. So don't bother about the time value of money. 
But if you want to prepare, I have this video available. So in prerequisite only. So I will publish course very soon and uh, very soon as in one, in one or two days. So you can use those prerequisites. Organizing data, visualizing data and describing data was very useless topic. Why this topic was there in curriculum? I never understood. So now finally it is uh, this particular chart is, uh, portion is removed. This chapter was on like what is bar chart, pie chart and everything. So all the basic discussions which everyone understands and not very essential to understand the rest of the curriculum because if you see any chart, you will understand what is given in that chart even without understanding the basic concept of that, of that chart, right? So fortunately like these two readings are not important. Then probability concept in probability concept, remember, we have probability concept right now also. We have base uh, theorem and the expected value. But rest of the portion, which is very important for the field of finance, it will, it is important for safe level and level two and level three. So this, the concept which is moved to prerequisite is very important. So what are these concepts? So conditional probability, unconditional probability, joint probability. So these three concepts, if you are already aware of these three concepts, move on. You don't need to prepare this chapter. If you are not comfortable with these three concepts, then I would recommend you to prepare the probability concepts. Okay. Then common probability distribution. In common probability distribution, the discussion like normal distribution, uh, binomial distribution, Poisson distribution are moved to prerequisite. So my recommendation is to prepare common probability distribution part if you are not friendly with these concepts. And then in habits testing, again, uh, to understand the content given in the curriculum, you must understand the happiness testing part, which is given in the basics. So in classes, anyway, we will cover everything from the basics. We will skip time value of money. Oh, sorry, we will cover time value of money, skip organizing, visualizing data and describing data. We will cover probability concepts. We will cover probability distribution, sampling and estimation. It's covered indirectly in the curriculum. So not a big problem. Then habits testing we will cover from the basics and introduction to linear regression. Anyway, we must cover this with the basics. So I will cover this with the basics only. So no issues with that. But compulsorily prepare this. Why I'm not recommending you to prepare this? Because it is covered in your curriculum indirectly. Okay. So even if you directly start with the um, what is given in the curriculum, you will be able to understand. Now next is the financial statement analysis, mainly the financial reporting mechanics and list of chapters is in the prerequisite now. Now, again, the recommendation is if you are new to field of accountancy, you don't understand what is debit credit, you don't understand what is ledger, what is accounts, uh, how any entry gets impacted, what is a double accounting, double entry system in the accounting. So if you don't understand these concepts, then my recommendation is to prepare financial reporting mechanics. In rest of the portion, you will be able to prepare directly from the curriculum, directly from the books. Uh, you don't need to take the support of prerequisite. So make sure you understand the financial reporting mechanics. Again, I will provide you the relevant course on this particular part also, the prerequisite part. I will explain what is double accounting system, uh, how it works, how it impacts the income statement, balance sheet and everything. And I have seen students suffering in FSA only because of this. Smart students, but they don't know the basics of accounting. So they face a lot of problem in this uh, subject. Uh, they have to put additional effort or I can say a lot of effort to understand FSA, but FSA is super easy. As a curriculum, it is very easy. But as I said, without knowing the basic concepts, you will face problem. So I will provide a course on this also. The basics of financials, uh, basics of accountancy. And with that course, you will be able to prepare properly. If you directly use this financial reporting mechanics, if you directly use the institute's prerequisite reading, that reading is again written in a very horrible manner. You will face a lot of problem there. So again, avoid it and prepare from um, any course or any general YouTube video. That basic YouTube video will help you a lot compared to the prerequisite reading from the institute. Okay, so that's all from my side. If you have any queries relating to uh, CF 11's preparation or the level 2's preparation, feel free to ping me on my WhatsApp number. Uh, my WhatsApp number is 9096131868. Just WhatsApp, avoid directly calling. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care.